When we look at the New Testament, particularly the words of the Gospel, and particularly the book of Matthew, we need to understand it through a, a couple different um, filters. At its most basic, we need to understand it, uh, or one way we can understand it, is it could be described as a preponderance of, of um, uh, Semitisms, Hebrew idioms, uh, words and phrases that constitute the text. Uh, we, we tend to look at our Bible in paragraph form, as if it's a story or a narrative that's being written, but rather, remember these words were recorded in the minds of disciples, sayings and teachings of Jesus. They repeated them orally for 30 to 50 years, and eventually they wrote them down. But these were original teachings and phrases and thoughts, Hebrew idioms that were captured by the disciples. And we're going to be looking at some of these Hebrew idioms this evening. Though the Gospels are written in Greek, the syntax, the structure, the idiomatic nature, the Semitic uh, configurations often betray a Semitic origin, especially in the Gospels. The resulting Greek text that we have in our manuscripts today is soaked in Semitic terminology and terms of phrase that can sometimes only be understood properly when they're retrofitted or retro-translated back into Hebrew or Aramaic. The Greek uh, of our New Testaments, the Greek manuscripts, if you're able to access the Greek or read the Greek, you'll realize that it's clumsy Greek. At times, even the sentence structures are backwards, and the Greek language rules are violated in order to um, capture, or maybe not even violated, but the writers did not fully understand Greek. Thus, when they're bringing it into Greek, they didn't write the Greek properly in some instances. You can see sentences in the Greek that are essentially backwards, but then when you put them back into Hebrew and flip them around, it makes perfect sense. I'll show you some examples of this later on this evening. Another important uh, thing that we need to bring into the reading of the Gospels, the teachings of Yeshua, is that the Jewish language or code language of the Gospels consists of innumerable allusions to the wider expanse of Jewish literature and rabbinic thought. These allusions are full of meaning and depth and help us understand properly the words and teachings of Yeshua. A reader who is unfamiliar with the rabbinic teachings or the sayings of the rabbis and the Jewish concepts alluded to by the Gospels or even borrowed by the Gospels, misses the Semitic point of the passage. Here's one example of that. 30 to 40 years prior to the incarnation of Yeshua, so his advent here on earth, um, there was a rabbi by the name of Rabbi Hillel. You've all probably heard of him. One of his disciples asked him a question. Rabbi, what is the greatest of the commandments? And his response was to love God and to love your neighbor. Flash forward to Yeshua's ministry, and someone asks Yeshua the same question. Rabbi, what is the greatest of the commandments? And his answer was the same, to love God and to love your neighbor. Now, that must become an interpretive principle to the teachings of Yeshua, and here's why. Because Christianity has taken Yeshua's summation of loving God and loving your neighbor, and they've used that as an eraser to the rest of the commandments, saying that, that those two commandments all of a sudden negate all of the rest of the Torah. That Yeshua prioritized these to the point where nothing else really matters. But what's important to understand is that Rabbi Hillel's disciples never thought that way. They didn't take Rabbi Hillel's statements of love God and love your neighbor and use that as an eraser to the rest of the Torah. So when we reflect upon the teachings of Yeshua from that point of view, comparing his teachings and the response of his teachings within his context and culture, we get a deeper meaning and a broader understanding. 